Let me just mute that. Welcome back to, I've forgotten how many we've done. Six, six CRT live stream on a Sunday. Normally a Saturday, normally around the same time though. Saturday afternoon. Hello everyone and welcome. So, the Prut i3 Mark III, sounds really weird saying that, but it has arrived-ish. So the parts are available, the STLs are available online, the manual, the build manual's there. So I thought it'd be a good idea to look through the parts. I actually did this, so if others are aware of what else I've been sort of up to, the i3 Mark II that I'm sort of cloning, sort of cloning, replicating, I did this exact same thing where I looked at the parts between the Mark II S and the Mark II, and I found, I mean, between those two printers, you think, well, they're pretty much exactly the same. And there's actually quite a few little details within the parts that you think, oh, they did that because they wanted to add some strength or they wanted to reduce the amount of plastic and things like that, and maybe reduce the print time and how easy it was to print. So I can probably increase the volume a little bit. Sorry, everyone. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit louder. So yes, we're going to have a little bit of a look through the Mark III parts and compare them to the Mark II S and see what they've changed. I mean, we know about the, the Bontech extruder, the dual gear extruder and things like that. But what other parts have they changed or have not changed? Who knows? I haven't really looked through. I've looked through a couple of parts just to make sure like I can open them and they're not broken, things like that. But I've not really looked in detail at the parts at all yet. So we might find something interesting. We might not find anything interesting. But hopefully we'll find some things that are interesting, interesting enough to warrant taking a look at. So if you want to have a look through the links that are available, I shall put those in the chat. And if you scroll down on that page, you can obviously see the little bit about the PEI beds not coming in exactly as ordered. So they're not going to be quite right, which is a little bit disappointing, but they're giving you a discount for a new one, which is a bit weird. You thought you just have the proper one that you actually ordered in the first place, but whatever, never mind. Yeah, further down the page, there are the handbook, build manual, the STL parts and the drivers. Firmware not available yet for obvious reasons. <laughs> I say obvious reasons. My assumption is that they're not giving you the firmware because you can pretty much build the rest of the printer with those four links. So if they had firmware, then someone else could rush build one and send them out prior to everyone else. Not going to happen, probably. But that's my guess as to why it's not there yet. But that being said, I'm pretty excited to get mine. I did luckily order mine on the 23rd of September as it came out. So should be getting it in this week, hopefully. I think they're shipping the first batch out this week. Link doesn't work. Wow, that's a good start, isn't it? Interesting. I wonder if that page has just completely disappeared now. No. I just opened the same link. Is that one the same or different? I think that's exactly the same link. Hmm. If you go to, just go to uh, prusaprinters.org, it's the, it's the first blog post on that page. So that's another way you can find it. Right. So who have we got here today? Jay's 3D Adventure, Mr. Poof, Jack Waterfall. Hello, everyone. A few names I recognize, obviously. Who else have we got here? I don't think I can see a list of everyone that's in the stream. There are seven people. Well, welcome everyone. Let's get started with some of these parts. Sorry, bit of a brain fart. Okay. 
change the scene, do the things. That looks about right. Oh, I have got one of the parts printing as well. So we can take a look at that later on. That is Steve that's printing that. Having not been available for a long time, he finally does now work, which is nice. So let's drag in a couple of parts. So, I mean, the first thing to notice, I sorry, I can't show you everything. But the first thing to notice is the Mark III STLs. There are only 25, whereas the Mark II S, there are 30. So that's one thing to notice. They've reduced the number of part counts, which presumably reduces the print time, which saves them time slash money. So that's the first thing. That's a fairly typical thing to do as you're improving a product to reduce the, the cost to manufacture it, although they seem to be charging more, but that's fairly typical. So the first part that we're actually missing from the Mark III is this belt guide. I'm not actually sure where it goes because on mine, I don't think I've even used them. <laughs> so I'm not sure where they were for. I think they might have been for the Y axis, but not entirely sure. But it's a tiny part, fairly irrelevant. So I think we'll pretty much just skip past it. And I think SolidWorks has crashed already. <laughs> Two minutes in. No, it's not entirely, there we go. So let's take a look at the next part. That was a very quick one. Cable holder. This I imagine will be the same as well. So they had a bit of a problem with the between the Mark II and the Mark II S. This was a new part for the Mark II S. And it attaches to the back of the extruder and helps prevent uh, the stress on the cables. So it keeps the cables rigid and stops them bending too much at that specific, specific point. And so stops that, uh, I've forgotten what it's called, the stress buildup when you bend a wire. And it's, it's like a stress hardening basically. And when it gets hard, it gets brittle, when it, bro it breaks. So the Mark III one, interesting. So that's pretty different. So, I mean, this is obviously a two part design this one on the left is a two-part design, uh, whereas this is a single component. I would guess it attaches onto the carriage that side and the bolt head sits in here. Looks like two wires are grabbed under the bottom and a big bundle over the top. And a million and one zip ties to hold it down. <laughs> yeah, presumably these are zip tie holes. Bit of a funny gap in there on the overhang. It's a cool looking part, <laughs> considering how basic it is. It does go up, has an upwards incline, but presumably that's what that for. It's a very specific channel for moving those parts. I'm not sure why it's quite so specific. It looks like a single cable in each side. Presumably that's the, uh, for the extruder, the hot end rather. I think they're still using an E3D hot end, although it's a Bontech extruder. And it looks like that would be where the heated cables go through. So that's quite an interesting difference. Obviously, they still having tested the original parts, decided, well, the, I say the originals, the Mark II S design. They obviously decided that actually that's still not good enough. And it did seem like a bit of an afterthought, if I'm honest. If, if I'm honest. So it's good that they sort of sussed out something a little bit more durable. On my i3 clone, I'm using, well, it's not, by clone, it's replica. So it's not, uh, it's not like a typical Chinese clone where they sort of change everything, but keep the same basic fundamentals. Mine is identical. So if you want to know what part I'm using for a specific part, it's the original one. <laughs> it's just none of it's sourced from Prusa. So yeah, the control board is the uh, the Mini Rambo, Rambo Mini, whichever way around they say. So on these parts, I mean, it's obviously a increase in the amount of plastic, but these are fiddly little things to get on. So presumably it makes assembly a lot easier because this is just stick a screw through the end and tighten it down with the 
two sort of clips that you held together you have to sort of hold them on and hold them around the thing and zip tie them on pain in the ass so it sort of follows the same design pattern but simplified which is nice should make the assembly a little bit easier let's take a look at the next part so they're labeled differently so this is going to be a bit weird so let's look at let's go through the mark three parts first so this next one they're calling the Einzi base so the Einz, Einzi is a really weird word to say but it's basically an Einstein Rambo style board made by Ultimachine. Machine it's not a 32-bit board I believe it's still a 8-bit because they realized actually don't need 32-bit for what they want to be able to achieve so yes this is basically the control board cover I'm immediately seeing some differences from what I remember so let's take a good look at that uh, LCD support Rambo base here we go Hopefully you can see some of these details on the parts, despite the fact I'm trying to fit two on the screen in one go. So straight away you can see they're very similar. The design details are the same, so the way it's going to mount is pretty much the same. Noticeably this is on the other way up. So here, compared to here, there's a difference in how that cable mounts. So the the Mark III one, the INZ one's on the left, and the uh, Mark II S one on the right. Presume it's difficult to say why they do it that way around. Presumably, it's the way the cables sort of wrap round the. It looks like they're still using a, a filament to keep everything aligned. So it looks like just by orienting the cables that way by having the thing on the other side it's slightly easier to assemble maybe interesting the zip tie sort of holds from the side it looks like there's probably yes it's a bigger hole as well isn't it so there's probably it's either just easier to fit through the hole or there's bigger cables or more cables I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure why they do it, but it's interesting that they decided to change it because presumably this one doesn't look that complicated. Perhaps, okay, so maybe because they changed the size of the hole, they didn't want to put this over this side because that was too thin. So they've moved it from the top to the side so it doesn't have to interfere with being close to the edge. So that would make, make sense for that part. Mm, this part, not so sure. That's a little bit confusing. Not sure about that one. So what other changes are there? Well, they're very similar. There's this little slot here. I'm not sure why that is. So it looks like they've removed a row of these square holes, the rectangular, and uh, got this instead. This round slot. It may be for a ribbon cable, the ribbon cables for the display or something. I'm not really sure. It's going to be interesting to see what they use that for. Coming around to the side. Uh, again, it looks that looks very similar. So it looks like the... What are these for then? This, look, this looks like a tapped hole. Ah, uh, that might be... Maybe that's for the Pi Zero that you can put on. Might be a way to screw the Pi Zero down before you then squeeze the Einzi board over the top. Can't imagine what else you'd need that for. Other than that, largely the same. The underside. Yeah, you can see when... Uh, there's definitely something different here because you can see the mesh is different so it looks like they've changed these wow <laughs> they've massively increased the complexity of the holes 
Wow. So they've clearly done this to sort of design how the head moves around the hole. So if we look at the old one, oh, it's actually the same. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that before. So it's interesting, these parts in the corners. So typically because, because of the ramp up in speed and changes in motion, as you get to corners, you typically over extrude slightly. So by having these little cutouts in the corner, you get the head to move towards the corner and then sort of around, and it gives a larger area for that plastic to be distributed over. And although it might still over distribute the plastic, it won't put it in the, in the corner. And then in the bottom of the hole, I mean, this is, it's basically a designed filament, a designed extruder pile. So as you're coming up, obviously you start on this face here and you build it this way and it'll first do the hex. And then when it comes to this part, so it will basically draw straight lines straight across here without going into the hole, probably. They might do some interference with the hole. It's strange that they haven't gone all the way to the side. It's pre pretty much, instead of trying to cover the whole hole at once. It'll do this side first, the top and bottom, and then the left and right, and then it will fill over these corner parts. Because I don't know if you've tried just putting a hex and a hole, that hex is typically really difficult to, uh, to have tidy because there's basically a hole in the middle of your uh, bridge. So by doing this super complex hole, you basically design the path before making it an STL so that the G code comes out how you want it and is tidy. It's very complicated, but if you've got to print loads of these and assemble them, you don't want to be digging out plastic as you go. So it's obviously worth their time to basically not over design, but put a lot of time into the design of these holes to make sure that the assembly is easy and consistent, obviously. Not sure what else I'm going to be able to see here. One of the easiest way to look for differences is see how the uh, the mesh changes. So you can see how the the triangular mesh uh, on this face on the left and right is identical. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I can see any differences. So although that's not a given that it, I mean, it'd be very difficult to change the geometry and keep the mesh exactly the same. Interesting. Largely the same with obviously a couple of few, a few tweaks. And there's no interesting things in the. That's strange. This one only managed to import as a surface body, so there's probably some errors. You can see there's some errors in that import. It's funny. I've had quite a few problems with errors in import of their parts actually, but it doesn't really matter. As long as they print out fine, that's all that I really care about. So onto the other part of the INZ, the door. No errors in the import, which is nice. Uh, and then the, oops, it is a, the Rambo doors. Yep, a few more changes here as well. You'd think something as simple as a door, they probably keep the same just because they don't want to spend the time changing it. But you can already see, so this big square here, for example, where you can see that mesh, it's obviously, it's not on air. <laughs> so they've basically taken out a layer or two. Let's see how thick it is. So it's half a mil, so that might be two layers. I mean, that's, it's not a lot of plastic and it might seem fairly insignificant, but it's obviously worthwhile for them to take it out because they pay for every little bit of plastic they got to send you. Ah, it looks like the whole thing is shorter as well. Let's just take a quick measurement of that. So that's about, oh, let's go overall height is 16 mil. This one looks more like 20 at least. 
Yeah, that's 20 mil. So they've taken four mil off the height. So obviously reduced print time because they're reducing the number of layers and reduced plastic. Presumably they've decided that for cables you can route such that you don't need that extra bulge and so the door can be slightly thinner. Always good to see. One thing they've got actually consistently on their parts, I noticed it on another, this text is quite difficult to see until you sort of move it to an angle, but it does say R run, so presumably that's revision one, and they'll change that as they uh, they change the parts. Obviously not evident on the uh, on the old version. What other changes can we see? And in this area, all the mesh looks all the mesh looks the same, so that's probably not changed much. I wouldn't have expected them to change a lot. A lot else. This is one of the features that they added on the between the Mark II and Mark II S. So obviously this bit is typically a large thick wall of plastic where they've got infill all the way up. But there's but by putting this hole in it, you're actually getting two things. So depending on your number of perimeters, a perimeter wall is typically stronger in especially in this direction than the infill. So by adding wall vertical faces, you're adding a couple of perimeters, which is increasing your strength and maybe reducing or it's, perhaps it's equivalent plastic use is probably equivalent or or less than. So a nice way to get, I don't know how that would affect the print time might be longer because there's more perimeters which are typically slower printed slower than infill but yes that one's that feature's present here as well these little cups to align everything they look the same no changes there they do have some slightly weird geometry i'm not sure that'll print very well but in fact, it's not, I mean, the overhang is fine. I mean, you're never going to get a sharp angle like that. So you imagine sl slightly rounding it. But I mean, yeah, it looks fine. Right, I think that's all the changes we're going to find there. So again, reduced layer height, reduced plastic use probably, and a reduced print time. All the things that you sort of typically expect to see on a new revision. How's that print getting on? Pretty good. So this is the cover. We've not got we've not got to that bit yet. Uh, does anybody have any questions on what we've covered so far? Not that it's a particularly educational video, but just if you wanted me to cover anything that we've looked at already. If not, I shall carry on. So the hinges, the hinges basically hold the door on. I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any changes in these at all. I would be really surprised if there is. They look very much the same. Yeah, the mesh looks the same. File size is probably exactly the same as well. Understandably, the hinges were not very exciting. So let's cover some slightly more exciting parts. The extruder body. So the extruder body obviously has the extruder, the stepper motor, and holds sort of half of the, uh, well, okay, so this is very different. I think we probably expected that though. So for reference, let's bring up the old extruder body. Mm -hmm. Seems to be still important. Right, 
Okay, so the <laughs> this is probably the most significant changes we've seen so far. This is very different. So starting in the bottom left, it would appear they've moved. So this little step out here is probably for the end stop. So where the carriage moves to the far left, the, it touches the end stop, obviously. Previously that has been on the on the cover, but now I think it's on the cover anyway, or it might have been on the X carriage. But either way, that seems to have been moved here. It might be for another reason. It might be to do with airflow actually as well, to try and keep some airflow in the inside and sort of channel it backwards. Congratulations, Joe, on your 3D print finishing successfully. Ah, oh, yes, of course, yes. Yes, end stops are gone. You're right. Forgot about that. So, yeah, so, uh, yes. I didn't even think to measure the distance between the holes, so we're, it's improved. The size of the fan is now 40 millimeters. I forgot about that. So, that's interesting. That's not coming through there. But yeah, 40 mil fans. So there's a few other changes to this fan duct as well. Because uh, you can see on this one on the right how the geometry is basically defined by a, a circle going this way to hold the extruder and a circle going that way for the airflow. But in fact, presumably that impeded some of the airflow because the, uh, the, the hot end heatsink from this angle is pretty much a rectangle, so a cross section through the cylinder rectangle, sort of. So by having these edges here, presumably they're limiting their capacity to cool the heatsink. Whereas on this one, you can see how that circle has become much more rounded. So they've cut out here and here, right down into the corners as far as they can go. I'm not sure why this one's further up. Might be, hmm. See if we, there is. No, there's nothing. I'm not sure why that is. It might be just to uh, his, uh, assist. It might just be to assist with the uh, holding of the extruder, the hot end. I always get those two words mixed up. But yeah, that looks like it should improve the cooling capacity. These are different as well. They rounded them off and they now direct sort of less upwards than before. I'm not sure how much of a big difference that's gonna make. I suppose it might look a little bit nicer. Ugh. Why did they do that though? That's just gonna go sloppy, isn't it? It's gonna have this weird overhang attempt I can imagine if other people try and print this, you might get some pretty poor results off that edge. In my mind, that should just be, there's no, I can't see any benefit to having it filleted, rounded like that. Like that, you're just stacking layers on top of each other on an overhang, simple. But as soon as you've got that fillet, you're trying to do the overhang, and then you're also doing another overhang with, uh, you're going from just a standard bridge with the square one on the right, to a, bridge with an overhang. I think you're gonna be, uh, I mean, it's pretty minor, it's just a heat sink. Words are not coming out today. It's just an air duct. But I don't know, maybe because, what's the, what's the size of this? One mil. So if you're 0.25 layers, then that's only four pieces up. One, two, three, four, I mean, it might, they may just touch, so. Maybe that's why it doesn't matter so much, but it does seem a little bit redundant. Anyway, <laughs> let's not focus too much on those tiny little things. So the Pinder probe has slightly moved. So the Pinder obviously is slightly different because it now has that thermal sensor inside it. So presumably another wire or two coming from that. A much bulkier clamp. So this one always had problems with 
you know, these sort of areas in here. There's a lot of little detail and they, with the printing in ABS, it did tend to be a little bit hot and mushy. But this one like, looks like it might be a little better. I'm not sure what they're gonna gain from increasing that offset. I mean, it might make the cables a little bit easier to route. Now obviously it really goes in this orientation, so let's try and look at it in that orientation. I don't show, I'm not sure why they do this though. They sort of join the two sides together. It might be so that when you remove it from the bed, there's no chance that one side stays stuck and then you put stress on the top of the hinge. It might sort of keep them joined so that when you pull it off, they come off together and then you can pull those bits out afterwards. But that just means you've got to do a second manufacturing process. I'm not sure entirely why. Obviously they've reduced it to one screw. They probably found out the same sort of thing that I did. When you have two screws trying to hold a single clamp, you either, when you tighten one, it obviously tightens it down. And then the second one will either be tighter or less tight than the first. It's very difficult to get them exactly the same, especially if you're obviously doing it by hand. So one of them ends up doing nothing, therefore not worth putting it there. It does look quite a lot chunkier. Uh, moving up, we've got so again, you can see this where they put the effort into the holes. So these are typically square nut holes. They did them, you can see they did them one way and now they switched to doing it the other way. Not sure why, because that is just gonna be the bridge to nowhere. That point there, if you print this way, that's gonna be really strange because on this layer where you're printing that face, it's just going to be printing out into nothing. It's going to come out and just go across and that whole corner is just going to fall. That doesn't seem wise, but maybe, maybe that's semi-intentional because they've done this on previous parts where they put stuff in, in a corner like that so that it droops a little and it gives you this sort of positive lock when you push it in it stops it coming out again, basically. But it's a bit of a naff way to do it. This has changed quite a bit, actually. So if you didn't already know, the cover that I'm printing basically sits on the front of here. It's a block that sits on the front of there. And the E3D V6, which I'm pretty sure they're still using on the Mark III, the, the head of it sits in here, the heat sink gets in here, and the hot end is at the bottom. And previously it's quite difficult because they've got that PTFE that sticks out the top of the heat sink. It's quite difficult to get the whole thing sort of in without damaging the plastic. But the lip here was used to hold the whole heat sink assembly in place. So it basically locks onto that lip and stops it falling down. But obviously, because you've got that cover coming over on the other side to hold it up, you don't need to hold it up on both faces. So it looks like they've added a effectively a chamfer here so that it's much easier to push it in. It'll sort of go in and then side up, sort of in that motion, as opposed to sort of trying to wedge it in like that. And that looks like it'll make it a little bit easier to assemble. And obviously the cover then holds it in place. They've blocked off this bit a little bit. Maybe that 40 mil fan has got a slightly thicker cable. There's a noctua, so yes, there is. Sorry, let me have a drink. So previously they only had a two pin fan. So you have your, your ground or neutral and the 12 volt line. Set RPM, or you can fluctuate it with voltage. Whereas this one, you can actually measure the RPM. So it has a third signal cable, with which I believe outputs a variable voltage. And so you know what the RPM of the fan is currently. And this little, uh, this little hole here, this little gap is for routing, or routing, routing, I should probably say routing, routing the, the cable. 
out towards the back of the carriage. So the bottom side that's done. So at the top here we've got these three holes that you can see come into alignment here, here and here. Uh, these are for mounting the stepper motor and the other one, judging by how far back it is, will be used to hold the other Quantec gear. You have this little hole here for obviously being able to see what's going on. You can sort of use it to clear it out. They have the same sort of thing as before. Looks like they've changed it slightly, just based on the other the chain, other changes to the internal geometry. It's interesting how they've gone lower quality with the STL. So obviously there's a lot of lines, points, vertices here, and that gives you a lot of detail, a nice smooth curve. Whereas here they've completely reduced it massively. It's like maybe 60 points or something around the circle. One, two, three, four, five, eight, not even that, 30 or 40. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. So, I don't, I don't think that's going to affect the print quality in any way, particularly. And the functionality certainly is not going to be affected. So, no bad thing to have slightly smaller data, slightly less data in your part. I mean, without, I don't know intimately what the bond text sort of geometry is like, but presumably on here you get one wheel sitting one side of this and the other sitting the other side and they're geared to one another. So they rotate in opposite directions. Very similar pulling them through. Whereas here you had, again, your step motor mounted in roughly the same place. Your Driver gear, uh, web, not webbed, webbed gear. You know, with the teeth, the teeth, the toothed gear, and then an idler on the other side, which was basically just a bearing, and that had a hinge which forced the two together, the bearing surface and the mill surface, and that's that's a standard extruder setup. But here, obviously, with the two Bontec gears, you don't have that. Now I'm not sure what the idler situation is or all that complex geometry. Goodness me. So, wow, that's thin. <laughs> that, can't believe that looking, being very strong. How thick is that? Half a mil, two layers of plastic. Yes, <laughs> that's a little bit thin. Probably not worth having that, but there you go. I think we're going to need to take a look at the idler to understand a little bit more about how that stuff's working. Because on the Bontech, I don't think there really is an idler as such. Obviously, they're both driven, so there's nothing that's actually an idler, but I don't know how the opposite gear uh, puts tension on there, you know. Very flat. And on the back, they've joined up the whole outer surface to be a continuous piece. Not sure what the effect of that's going to be. Presumably, that's a decision based on the the idler and system they've got. That's weird. So this one doesn't have a. So presumably, that screw then goes all the way through the X carriage. It didn't before. So before, there was a head up on this corner, whereas now they don't have it. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, that would make sense. So that's probably a little... How's that going to work? So the filament path is obviously through this hole here, and you can see all the way through the part there. So the filament path goes straight down here, which means that's that hole will be, I reckon that gap then is for a PCB, a small PCB which slots in. The cables probably come out some part of this arrangement here. There's so, <laughs> so many holes. Uh, let's know 
bit of a cross section, have a look inside. So it looks like these two holes on the top are going to be self-tapping to hold something else as well. It might be worth actually trying to bring up the... No, it's not going to be very easy for you guys to see it as well. There's already a lot on screen. But the instruction manual will obviously give you some hints as to what these different parts are used for. But in terms of differences, I mean, obviously you do have the filament sensor, so you've got provisions for that. And the idler, I believe, is going to work in a slightly different way because this one was a single pivot with some springs, whereas this one doesn't have anything that's going to pivot on. It looks like it's going to be attached straight through here and maybe another one, no, probably not through there, another through there. So it's going to be locked in place, I think. Oh yeah, the plastic sensor, yeah, the cover, the cover for the sensor. Interesting. So definitely, well, almost certainly the most changed part. It does look nicer. In my mind, it looks a little bit more robust than the previous one. This one had some slightly flimsy parts, whereas this one all just looks a little bit, a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. Right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a blurry look at the print. So you can see the little R1. Uh, you can't see where I'm pointing. Is that the chat on screen is not scrolling down properly, is it? Or is it? There we go. So, yeah, you can see the little R1 on that print there coming out. I'm only printing it in PLA just so I can have a look. I'm not going to actually be using these parts. We can see also on the, uh, that cover has the same sort of uh, fillets on the air duct. So we can have a look at those and see how they come out. I mean, I'm printing it in PLA, so the fan's going to be running a lot, whereas you probably wouldn't really have that with a printing ABS. Oopsie daisy, hang on, sorry, give me two seconds. Sorry, 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 sorry. Give me right. So carrying on. Next, we have a look at the extruded cover. So this is the part I'm printing at the moment. Just let that pass that file. Extruder cover. So again, you can immediately see like it's much thicker. Everything is just thicker, which is strange because obviously they're trying to reduce the amount of plastic they print in. Hello, welcome to the stream. Well, I should say welcome back <laughs> to another stream. Interested in the new semicircular fan duct. I designed one for my E3D mounts a few months ago. However, it didn't quite produce enough airflow. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. In a little moment. It might be the next piece, actually. So again, as with the other one, you have... What the hell's going on there? Okay, that's normal. So again, you've got this filament around the, the air duct, whereas before it was squared off. You have the R1, so revision of the part. Looks like the fan mount is unchanged. Oh, no, it's... 
Uh, so it's a slightly deeper hole. They've added some geometry to make it slightly easier to insert the nut. It's much shallower, uh, much thinner bit of plastic on the other side to hold for the well, the, clamp the clamping surface is much thinner. In terms of the air ducts, so this is where the air duct comes through. Very different there, so we'll take a look at that in a moment. See what that sort of geometry is like. This is very different. What's going on here? Okay. So the whole thing stands off. So the center, uh, the distance from the center of the extruder to the face where the fan mounts, you can see, is very different. Let's have a measure. So that's 23 mil versus what used to be about 14.8. So about 15 to. So they've added about 8 mil in thickness. Probably due to the new fan, yes. It seems weird that they've gone with, well, I must say, I'm pretty happy with 40 mil fan. Yeah, that is probably due to the fan. They've obviously got to increase the width. It just doesn't look like it really fits, does it? <laughs> they, they've not changed enough. Although I guess this point here is where the center of that circle is. So you obviously want all your air to make sure it's actually going through the fins. If it's just going around the fins, then you're losing the benefit. So presumably this is where the um, fan duct is now going to fix on you have the so the radial fan uses that hole and I think this one this one and this one hold the cover onto the back oh does that go so one of the things that I noticed with the old assembly is there's nothing the only holes that hold this cover onto the so this is the, the whole handy gestury thing so this is the extruder body and this is the cover that sits on here and holds the extruder in but there's only bolts at the top so if it doesn't fit quite right then you end up just clamping the top and the bottom just sticks out so it looks like they might have added a hole at the bottom that will hold it in although it is probably my wishful thinking and just for the fan duct <laughs> Yeah, obviously the resulted thickness, this bit's changed the same. So this is now what holds the, the extruder up as opposed to how it did previously. Again, more change geometry around the ducting based on the 40 mil fan and the slightly improved uh, clamping of the V6 heatsink. So before it was held all around here and down here. Now it's just held at the top and at the bottom, which is all you need. Two points, locks it in place. I think that's pretty good. I wonder if there's, so this is where I'd expect to see some empty internal geometry. So let's take a look. Because by obviously having some something empty on the inside, they can reduce some plastic. And it's solid. So I don't know what infill percentage they're going to be using for these parts. Presumably be quite high. But nothing empty. No emptiness on the inside. No weird surfaces to add extra thickness, extra, excuse me. So in some of the Mark IIs parts, they actually have, they put basically a plane in and cut the solid body with an infinitely thin wall thickness, which basically gives the same external geometry, but adds these exterior walls to the inside, if that makes sense. So it does sort of a perimeter that actually butts up against itself basically adding strength to specific points within the internal geometry. So yeah, quite a lot of added plastic there, mainly for that 40 mil fan. I do hope, I personally have not used a 40 mil Noctua fan before. Presumably they are pretty quiet. I mean, 
I know Noctua and I know their fans. I have a lot of their fans. A lot. I have quite a few of their fans. Just none for printer size. But yeah, that's the extruder cover. That looks pretty good. Hopefully, mine might actually be done soon. Let's have a look. Uh, how's the print coming along? It is slightly not quite on the screen, but looks like it's doing okay. I don't know how much of this you can see. Probably should have considered that before showing it. Uh, let's have a quick look. 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go. That's all right. So what parts we got next? Extruder idler, so this should give us some additional information of, ooh. Is that what I expected? No. Interesting. Not entirely sure which way up it goes. Let's have a let's get the extruder body back. So these have obviously got to go at the bottom. Okay, so it looks like it will still have a tension. That's interesting. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's so it looks like the second Bontech gear, Bontech gear rather, will be between these two points. And then this screw mounts through the top here, so that hole comes up, links up with that hole, and these two down the bottom through here. Ah, oh, yes, they're screwed from the other side. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But there's no tensioning mechanism. I'm not sure what this cutout's for. It lines up with this, where the where I think the filament sensor is going to be coming. But it's not entirely. Maybe the filament sensor has a can sense at a distance larger than, I mean, something short. So maybe it, the sensor's here, it's expecting the filament here, but it can sense all the way out to here. So they have to just basically clear the area in front of the sensor. Maybe. But it also looks like there's going to be a screw going right through that area. So not entirely sure how that's going to work. Slightly. Ah, maybe there's. I really want to make this. Unfortunately, because these are horrible STL files, I can't just make them together. Uh, right, I'm going to be right back in two seconds. I'm just going to make these, save these out, put them in an assembly, and so we can have a bit of a closer look at how they're going to fix together. I shall be back in literally two minutes. <laughs>
Yes, you can post links, I think. I don't know how, I don't know if I need to give you channel permission to do that, do I? I'm not going to ban you for putting a link as long as it's reasonably sensible. don't know how to change any chat settings so if you can post a link you can post a link because <laughs> I don't know how to change it otherwise it won't post sorry I don't know how <laughs> maybe it automatically blocks spam messages and counts links as spam messages well, I've <laughs> just put spaces in random places. You can do that. I've turned off the automatically block spam. So I don't think we're going to have that problem with so three people here. But I'm sure I can manage that manually. want to uh, post a link then you can do that if it will let you so I put these two Bontac parts together and it would appear so where previously they had uh, the extruder and the idler and it went like this they basically just inverted it so now it pivots at the top and springs at the bottom which is sort of smart, I suppose. So you've got that pin at the top, basically. So it's screwed in from the back. And I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Oh, so maybe this is a, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to over speculate. But it looks like it's going to pivot around the top and then hinge out at the bottom. So there's going to be two springs probably in these two holes screws all the way through there with springs on them with some I mean it's only going to need to move a tiny bit so and then you've got this limiter here where this butts up against here these two faces oh. it's really not liking it is it there we go no still won't What I'm going to do is actually go to the manual quickly. Extruder. So the square nuts, the Bontech, the little axis part, the switch, presses in there, pins, the screw. the stepper motor yeah so I was right about where these springs go they come through from the other side provide the spring loading heat sink e3d v6 that actually looks different it doesn't look like a v6 it looks like an e3d but not the top of it looks different I sent you a tweet oh good does that mean I have to remember how to Twitter <laughs> uh, 
Hopefully that will come through in a minute. So yeah, ones at the top, the Brontec gear, extruder, the gear, sorry, the tooth gear goes in there, springs sit in here. I haven't seen your tweet come through. I don't know how, I don't, <laughs> I'm not very good at Twitter. Let's see if it's come through on my phone. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. So yeah, screws to the top, springs to the bottom, springs on the outside, yeah, so the springs sit on the outside here, the screws go all the way through. Yep. Let's see if I can. <laughs> there we go. That's probably what it'll look like. I'm glad we got that sorted. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's pretty cool then. It's a little bit more, well, it looks a little bit stronger. Although, I, to be honest, I quite like that hinge to have something on both sides. Although it does, it doesn't, it's the stepper motor. Ah, that makes sense. So that's a clearance hole. Yes, and that goes through there. That's much nicer. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Good. I like it. Happy with that. So yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any much, any much, much point comparing it to the original extruder. They are completely different. <laughs> so this one pivots this way, this one pivoted that way. Different thickness, different design, different bearing, different, there's literally completely different. <laughs> That's that idler. What other parts we got? Extruder cover, extruder idler. Hang on. It sounds like the print has finished. It has, which is why the camera is now blocked by everything. I shall be back in two moments. I shall go and pick up that print. <laughs> So I have it. Uh, I'm gonna just enlarge this camera so you can see. Uh, yeah. So uh, this hole here, you can see, is not pr printed particularly well. That geometry is not quite right. But that hole in there, that looks probably as it's meant to. Good enough for sticking your screw head in. Uh, other than that, a reasonably good print. It is a bit of a rush job because I just wanted to have it very simple. Those filleted edges. 
come out sort of okay. Oh dear, doesn't like focusing on this. Doesn't look too bad. Interesting. That's really satisfying. <laughs> that smooth edge up there. Mm. <laughs> it's just so smooth. But yes, larger fan. Nice. I like it. Right, let's shrink that down again. Carry on with uh, those STLs. Uh, where's the next one? By the look, we've looked at filament sensor cover, so this presumably sits. Yeah, that doesn't. That's, <laughs> that's about as simple as it gets. So that's a cover that will sit on the. So obviously filament input there, and then screw and screw holds the filament sensor in. And I was right. Well, whoever, I didn't say it. I can't remember who mentioned it. But yes, that slot in the top of the extruder body is where the filament sensor go, and it has four little pins that stick out the back towards the X carriage. So this is a new part, nothing to compare it with on the old part, on the old design. Heat bed cable cover. So I mean, the hot bed, the heat bed we know is different, but there is likely to be a lot of similarities. This one is probably going to be one of them. Uh, heat bed. The file size is different, so it's not an identical file. But I'll be damned if I can spot the difference. Slight changes in here, maybe. No, I don't think that's different. I think it's just been exported slightly differently. So yeah, heat bed cable cover, pretty much the same. The LCD display cover so again this is a different file size so let's have a look for any differences so maybe that that might be the only difference then they've added the revision A slightly bigger chamfer on that corner. Presumably that's just a slightly nicer final appearance. This front's definitely different. This is being Oh yeah, so maybe as a result of the chamfer changing on the corner, this is meshed all up here slightly differently. For some reason that all meshes to that one vertex there instead of straight up. Is there? Maybe that's a different angle? No, this can't be a prints on that face. Interesting. X is the same. Yeah, all this is pretty much the same. There's a couple of differences in the chamfers, geometry-wise. Again, see here, they've got two bodies. So there's two solid bodies that make up this part. Here is an example of what I was talking about earlier. So they've added some weird internal geometry. Maybe it's not deliberate. 
to anything else to the book. <laughs> so they've got this weird internal geometry on the inside of the part. For whatever reason. Or is it on the... Yeah. A little bit strange. Probably not really meant to be there. Let's have a look. So yeah, is it? <laughs> ah, okay, so it looks like where they've used a cut operation to do some chamfer on this hole, they've kept the body that did the cut and it's left this weird extra piece in the middle. Sorry, talking into my hand. Yeah, I think it's probably not meant to be there, but I don't think it's gonna actually add anything or take anything away. Probably just one of those weird things with the CAD software they use. Yes, largely the same. Presumably this one will have the same, yeah, the same weird internal body. Nothing that amazing about that one. Let's have a look at the support legs for the LCD. So these have got to be different because the Mark III uses the main, uh, the main big plate it's not a back plate, the, this, the main plate it uses, but then it has a, an extrusion to a front and rear plate instead of the M8 rods and the funny little corner pieces. And the LCD parts used to attach onto those funny little pieces. So let's get those over there. So they've combined these into one file. So you used to have an LCD support A and B, whereas now they're either, no, they're not the same, but they're Oh, that's a tight uh, R1, R1. Combined into a single file, presumably because that makes, because, I don't know. I mean, they're not the same part, so they still have one of each. So maybe it's easy for them to organize the print process that they can just do, yep, get some LCD supports. Because you'd never want one of them, you'd always want both. So it looks like they've got some square nuts for holding them onto the. So presumably this one will go up this way. Square nuts from the back, <laughs> screw from the back into square nuts on the brace that holds the LCD in this angle. That's a bit weird. Probably would have been nice for that hole to go all the way through, but. Doesn't really matter. That's another little weird bit. So these are probably just little quirks really about the software they use. It's probably quite difficult for them to get that to look nice. So in SolidWorks probably a bit easier to do, but they're obviously using open source software. I'm pretty sure they still use OpenSCAD, which I can barely imagine using. It must be terrible. <laughs> Whatever works for them. So yeah, quite a big difference. You can see how these used to have this clamp and this zip tie thing, which I mean, hopefully they've got no zip ties in this. Oh no, they have got zip ties. They've still got zip ties. Probably not the best material for production, but there you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, hopefully this will fit a little bit easier. I mean, it should be easy. Just put them on the screws, job done. Whereas this was to sort of force it, clamp it, try and stick a zip tie through. And you've got loads of, well, certainly for me when trying to print out parts for mine, these LCD covers were a bit of a pain because of that funny little routing. So if I, yeah, so that hole there, that's supposed to be where a zip tie goes through, but it just seemed to keep clogging up with plastic during the print. And I don't really know why, because it really shouldn't have done. It got completely blocked, so. Had to dig that out. So some interesting differences, but more a result of the overall design rather than any specific changes needed to for functionality of the original one. 
So the northern, the northern clan should be interesting. If Jack's still here, Jack Waterfall, I imagine this is going to be something you're going to want to integrate into. Goodness me, this is complicated. Uh, into your design. Hot two. Why is it called hot two? <laughs> So yeah, it looks like that screw that I was talking about earlier that I really wanted to hold the clamp on better is just for this. They've done some proper analysis on this, haven't they? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've actually had someone do some analysis. Hot one and hot two side. What? I, d I don't understand. <laughs> It's just so. I can't imagine that's going to print that well because it's on a curve. So hope, presumably, they're hoping that. How is anything going to come out of that hole? That's the ducting is insane. They, I'm pretty sure they'll have done analysis on this because that is not a trivial design. Fact, it was quite nice having that highlight. Let's bring that back. So there. The duct air comes in here and you get flow around here and here and here. I'm not sure what this so presumably that stops. Maybe it results in some turbulence. That will result in some turbulence. And then that path, that part at the end is obviously to interesting. I wonder if it is something they've, they've, they've probably either analyzed it or just done loads of revisions and guessed it. Ducks are massive, they're not that massive. They're pretty massive, I suppose. But you want to see, if your ducks are too small, then you won't have enough pressure. Because you want to keep the speed fairly low until you get, I suppose they, uh, hmm, actually, yeah, you're right. There's nothing that brings it down into a sort of focus at all. It's going to be interesting to try, but it does look like it could be pretty good. I'm probably going to try and modify my either this one or my other Prusa. Very similar, yeah. Oh, they've put their little notch in, that's good. But how is that gonna print, what? <laughs> how is that gonna print reliably? It just sticks out into nowhere. That looks like an afterthought, that one. <laughs> oh well. And that doesn't work. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> what? The text that they put on the front just sticks through to the back. That's naff. <laughs> How difficult could it have been to not over extrude that? Oh, it only. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm the only one that finds that funny, but that is not very good. Why would they release something that is clearly... Surely someone checked these before they sent them out to everyone and printed thousands of them. I reckon that's probably going to have caused some excess printing time because it's got to go around all these little bits instead of just straight line across. Probably didn't add very much, but... I'm going to try and print one of these, I think, because that is not going to print very well. And this looks terrible. Overall though, looking forward to using it. Looks like there's going to be a lot of flow still at the, at the front. Hmm. 
So if we take a look at the fan nozzle from before, sorry, I should have opened this earlier. So that's basically what they had before. <laughs> the, the level of complexity it has increased somewhat. So before it was just, this is the inlet, comes in the top, it does do some slight separation, but then it's just straight out and over the white end, slash print. Whereas this one, oh, excuse me, sorry. Judging by these, this the angle of this face, that's going to help give some downward momentum so it comes out in a slightly downward direction. I mean, this is weird. Hang on, sorry. All over the place. Uh. Looking at that end on, I'm surprised. So looking at this end on, I'm surprised it is not filleted or chamfered across there. Because that would help with the downward momentum of the air. Maybe they didn't need that. Or maybe they just wanted a simple bridge. But I mean, I can't imagine a chamfer in there is going to cause a problem. I don't think it's going to help. I'm not quite sure why this randomly stops here. Oops, a laser. Hmm, interesting. Might do some improvements to that myself and test to see if that's any better. But I mean, from the original, wow, <laughs> quite a lot of difference. Quite a good, a good improvement there, I think. And it needed it. All right, the X carriage. So. So this is obviously another one of those very complicated parts, like the extruder body. So you might have to give me some help with identifying the different parts here. But let's see how we can do X carriage. So that's the Mark II S one on the right, and the new Mark III one on the left. So starting from the top, this gap here, which started off as this random weird gap that didn't do anything, to a area for the filament sensor, presumably. So the filament sensor cable will come through here, as that's just in front of where the filament sensor goes. I wonder, I don't know how long they've had this extra bit on the top, but I wonder if they filled it in almost when they released this design and they were already they'd already started using a filament sensor internally when they did this not sure so yeah i was going to say that i'm pretty sure that it looks like cuz these are obviously square nut traps so it looks like there's going to be a plate that sits on these faces. Oh, here we go. X carriage back. Let's import this and have a look at this. Ah, there you go. This is. So on all the other parts, they say, oh no, this one says, this one says R1, and on that it says Mark III. Uh, so this is how they're going to improve their cable management. That's a nice looking part. That should, oh, that's going to look so pretty. <laughs> so that basically fits on the back of here. Covers up your bearings, covers up the zip ties. Gives you some additional cable management options. Filament sensor is going to come down to this. This is where your bundle is going to sit. And it looks like, if you remember that part we looked at at the beginning that came from the spit bits at the back, it might be good to try. <sighs> so 
So before we had this, uh, that bit the, in the middle there with the big cable tie bundle just sort of sticks out the back. So that's how they're presumably going to improve that. Then you've got a square knot there, and you have a screw in there through that big thick plastic part, which will have the zip ties around it. Cable management. One thing I wonder if they so on my claim back here, the the belts almost slip out because the gap between here I think was a little too wide. So that's two point one. What were they before? Aha, 2.3, so they have, they've increased, uh, decreased the gap by 0.2 mil, which would be just enough to, again, 2.3, down to 2.2. Interesting. This one was 2.1. So one of the sides, 2.1, the other side's 2.2. Okay, sure, that must have been deliberate. <laughs> Yeah, not not sure why they did that. They're probably meant to be the same, and someone's made a boo boo. But not sure it's going to. Oh, what the hell's that? So they have this filament that goes through to help support the cables as they go from the extruder to the uh, control board. They have this piece of three mil filament that comes out. Two point eight mil, eight five mil filament that sticks down in this hole and sort of comes back upwards out of the X carriage and then round to the control board. And that looks a little bit messy. <laughs> looks like they've just cut it off at a random point and it's just stuck there. That hole should probably go all the way through because you're going to have this funny little filament blob here that's really thin. Anyway, probably not a problem. Wow, what is going on with this hole? So it looks like they've had, hmm. So they've probably stepped this hole. There's definitely a slight step in this hole to probably help you insert that filament a little bit easier. Square nuts again for holding the main body on. Interestingly, they don't have this part anymore. The old one has this part on the bottom to hold the extruder cables, the heater cables, extruder. The heater cartridge cables for the E3DD6. They seem to be gone, just replaced with this little mound. Interesting. Maybe they're managed more by, where's the, carriage back so again same sort of thing and they probably just come out of there up to here and then off from there yes because those two as I mentioned at the beginning it had like big divot on one side and two little ones on the bottom so the two little ones will be for this heat cartridge cables there and then the other cables come out here all the way through this hole and all the cables will come out that hole interesting very interesting so they've obviously done quite a lot to improve their, not only the cable management, but also the tension stresses on the cable to stop them breaking over time. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Again, obviously, filament sensor. That's gonna be a nice looking part, that is. It's going to make that whole hot end assembly look less sort of because at the back if you look at it from the back at the moment you can't see mine now but it's all just sort of a cable zip tie mess whereas this will apart from doing the functional things it will make it look a little bit more polished a little bit more professional well apart from the zip ties which definitely don't look professional i don't know why because on the hotbed on the mark 2s they have those U-bolts that they use to hold the bearings onto the plate. It might make sense for them to put U-bolts 
on this so it'll at least look a little bit more proper but maybe it just doesn't work out so that's the x carriage quite interesting x and idler i don't think there's going to be any changes in these but this i mean sometimes the parts that you expect to not have oh it definitely has changes uh, the parts you expect to not have changes because I've not told you about them. I mean, everyone knew about the bomb tech and the filament sensor and all that sort of stuff, but they've not said, oh, we changed this. But they definitely have. So let's take a X and idler. Didn't look like they made a lot of changes, but they've definitely made changes. So this bit you can tell they've kept the same because they've still got that terrible little bit of plastic that doesn't print properly because they're not actually joined. <laughs> so they didn't bother to fix that. Same problem as before. Has the same naff little gap. So you don't get a proper print. But I'd have rather they cut this whole bit out and just let them not be visible. They've still got this terrible looking chamfer around the top, which is just hideously untidy. But I suppose it works, so why change what works? Clearly this didn't work. So this is the old one here. They've had some, they obviously tried to do that thing where they modify the part in order to manipulate their G-code STL output. that so they've got this weird this now overlaps Ew. what's going on there it's just a bit of a mess actually so that's the square face that comes up there that overlaps that which is why that sticks out still so that same thing sticks out here they've got this other sticky out bit and then they've got this rounded bit on the bottom. Hopefully this will print a bit better. I mean, it should just be a straight line across, probably, because why would you not? Straight lines are going to print much better than a curve on an overhang. Well, I know <laughs> bridge in this instance. And then that looks like the same. They had that slot still before. The, you definitely got this new geometry, which is a bit odd. So what's going on there? How is that fix that? One mil. 1.5, so they've made that thinner. So it's thinner here where the head is, and looks like it's thicker here. So that's 1.5 versus 2.5 thicker where the nut is so it's basically the same on the back I think 2 mil versus 2 mil so they've changed that then oh yeah okay so they've added a th presumably but there's a recess there it looks like they've just move the whole gear one mil to one side because there's a recess here and a bulge here half a mil one mil that looks a bit like a bit of an afterthought <laughs> looks like they've tried to oh god it's all okay this is the dodgy part look oh my days What is going on here? Okay, so to make this single part, there are 11 bodies. So let's hide this one that we know we've got. There's this mess. So this is what they, what I talked about before about having inside uh, perimeters. So they've put these 
inside the part so that using slicer they know that it will manipulate it in such a way to put perimeters on the inside of the part instead of infill which improves the strength a bit but not in a particularly meaningful way and also here too I've got this weird thing where it also adds inside perimeters the question is where's that hidden So why is this? So on an STL, a vertex should always go to another vertex, but it looks like their geometry is so messed up that these verti vertexes, they've got this weird plane in the middle of this part. Here, this side's fine. This side's all mating up. But over here, Starting from there, by the looks of it. Yeah, here. It basically looks like they've got an infinitely thin plane between that curved part and the main face that's splitting the two. So you have... That's... If that doesn't work right, that's going to be really weird to print. Because it's going to do an entire top layer on the main face and for, well, however many top, uh, no, it's perimeters, isn't it? So it's going to have perimeters and then more perimeters and they'll just be barely touching. Let's hope, well, presumably select 3R slash slicer has manipulated, manipulated those correctly, but let's have a look at the compared mesh. So which way up have we got? Let's go middle. So it's at the bottom of this part. But yeah, you can see, look at that. They've basically modified their own STL. It looks like. That's so messy. Yeah, you can see the geometry down here is the same. It started to do the same thing here. So that's these lines here just going. Yeah, you can see them attached around the hole. Interesting. I might try and make my own version of these in SolidWorks using proper parts. Also, if you've not seen the... Oh my god. Okay, so it's just a surface body. So the internal geometry of these is quite interesting. So they've made the end of where the 8mm rod goes thicker, which you typically don't get. This weird surface body problem. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. I think they've added a couple of chamfers as well. Yeah, so they chamfered that corner. Not sure why specifically that one, but. Interesting, so slightly messy part that one, but they've obviously needed to offset that gear slightly for whatever reason, presumably any change that they've done on the X carriage. They probably moved the belts slightly closer towards the extruder side. So they've had to offset the belts by three quarters of a mil or whatever it is and so you get this weird problem let's look at the motor end presumably they'll have done a similar sort of offset again the body's not imported properly so that tells you there's probably some errors in it Interestingly, I suppose on this end you don't have a fixed belt, a fixed gear rather. You can, excuse me, move it up and down the shaft as you wish. You can see their little R1 mark there. Prints this way up, so they put it that way up. So they've added that. It's not really a watermark, it's just a, a version mark because why not? 
helps them control what parts they're giving out. And presumably, I mean, on, on mine, that R1 is fairly visible. I, I don't know if it'll focus, but so yeah, the R1 is very visible. So if they're trying to do customer support and they're thinking, we don't know what version you've got, people can look at their parts, although that's going to be pretty well hidden. So good luck trying to see that when it's in use. Yeah, it should mean that when they're trying to do customer support, the they can know what parts they've got and they can bring up the same files. But this one looks vaguely, again, they've done this weird internal geometry thing where you've got all these extra bodies around here to add those internal walls. Other than that, no change. Oh no, sorry, yeah, there you go. So, Removal of the end switch. As you know, there's no end stops. So no need to have a mounting point for it. In fact, it almost looks like an older version of this file. <laughs> but have they? So I just flipped it over, having a look in this hole to see if they made the same changes they made to the other side. Yeah, so they made that change as well. So hopefully that junk sheet should print a little bit better. I think that's all we need to look at for that one. I can't see anything else immediately obvious. Uh, the Y belt holder. So this is very different. Oops, so there we go. Let's move this one over here. Both imported well, which is good news. So at the top, fairly. Oh, okay, so there's a different offset at the top immediately. This one had this offset with the belt going in the side. It's fairly similar. This one, oh my goodness. That's some detail. Oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unexpected. I'm not sure that's going to print quite like that. That's not good, is it? Oh, that would be why there's 31 bodies. Because all of these ones don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, they've done the same thing twice. <sighs> that could probably do with fixing. So it looks like this time you just shove the belt in the side and it stays there as opposed to having to sort of wrap it round and all the, the whole cookie over dilly thing, which did all get a little bit silly. It's not, I mean, it's not that difficult. You sort of loop it round and push it on, but hang on. Yeah, I was just, I was thinking one of these sets of teeth should be the other way up. Should it? No, no, so the other way up is not, yeah, ignore me. I, <laughs> yeah, so instead of looping it around, they're just going to pull it straight through. It also looks mm, symmetrical now because this one's not symmetrical. So they had that weird thing where you had to get your bed the right orientation because the holes were offset and this was offset. And It does seem crazy to me to, I mean, in my mind, it's not that they're cleaning up what they're giving us. Surely they have to do it. They'll have done the work because they've got to print them out, haven't they? They're making, they're printing thousands upon thousands of these. They're going to have the perfect files. So unless there's something in that file that they don't want to show anyone. I mean, that's the whole point of the open source, isn't it? They provide to us everything that they use with the files that they've made. So to not have, I don't know, it's, yeah, it is just a little bit messy. Presumably it's a result of, again, the weird SCAD thing. It looks like 
that would line the top of that surface lines up with this one yeah so what they will have done is have presumably it would have gone straight and straight and then they used that slight bevel there and that one and that was one cut and then they made another change where they added this second cut and whoever added this second cut didn't mate it or you don't do the same sort of thing in SCAD but they obviously didn't make sure that that geometry covers the full area of the triangle they were cutting out which left this little mess which is unfortunate functionally presumably it will be better because otherwise they wouldn't have bothered as I said it's symmetrical now well it appears to be symmetrical so that makes assembly much easier much more difficult to get wrong this one had this weird I mean look at that you're yeah, screwed from day one with that. I'm not sure why this one had to be quite so weirdly offset, but this one does look better. Tidier, hopefully, as long as it prints well. But it might, you know, I'm not hugely familiar with SCAD, but although it's obviously look, this. So if I can show what I mean. So that's a vertical line there. And this is a horizontal line across here. Where's that tiny bit of geometry? It's there. So if we extend that out of there. just trying to exaggerate this so we can see hopefully a bit more clearly where this line came from so I, I've had a look at open SCAD and it looks like so the, the reason it's different is not because it fundamentally works differently it's just because you don't physically draw the line you just tell it the coordinates of the line so if you want a line between here and here you say draw line open brackets coordinates for this point and then coordinate for this point and then it gives you that line so fundamentally it works the same but instead of using a mouse to draw your lines you're just typing in what you're drawing but it still uses the same so if you want to hold you make a circle and you cut the hole through the shape and the way that your code runs through it is again a bit like SolidWorks so you have what you call the feature tree well it's not immediately obvious in these uh, imported parts you basically have a an order process so you start with the first thing and that might be an extrude of a box you then the second process is a circle and then the third process is it cuts it through and the way open SCAD would work is exactly the same as that only instead of drawing the things and having the tree the tree is the code and the code does the operations essentially SolidWorks is probably built on something that's like SCAD with a nice user interface so in terms of being able to tidy things up like this I don't think really there's a massive difference I'm pretty sure it would work in the same way But interestingly, that geometry doesn't particularly match up with the whole lot. Is that parallel to that? Nope. So that's the line. That's the little bit of geometry in there that's fixed. And I've expanded those lines out. And it gives you that. So it was certainly something like that before. And they added this second chamfer in. I'm just not sure how they messed it up. To be honest, it may be that at the size where they're viewing the files, I mean, if you're looking at this size, you can't really see those tiny little parts. And if they print them out to test them and it's printed out okay, then they presumably have no reason to look any further. But I don't know how what the zoom functionality on SCAD is like, but 
I can easily make it large enough to be able to see these problems. But, I mean, problem is a strong word. Essentially, I don't think it really is a problem, which is why they've not fixed it. Interesting, though. Interesting, interesting, interesting. They obviously didn't like... It's funny, isn't it, where they, they sell you this design as if this is the best thing. This is the best thing we've done. And then a year later, oh, it's changed. It's actually not the best thing. <laughs> like, was that the best design originally? Or is this just, is this better in every way? Or just better in some ways and worse in other ways? So is it worse or is it better? I, I know I know why. It's just a, a development of the design process. You never get everything perfect. You just do one thing and as you find out that that doesn't work for everything, then you slightly change it. Quite a big change. But I think that's, that's quite enough of that. Uh, that was the wide belt horror, the wide belt idler. So again, this is probably going to look, I imagine in my head, it's going to look pretty much the same, but instead of being mounted to the, uh, the eight mil rods, the M8 rods, I should say, it's going to be mounted to plate. So a flat mounting surface. Wide belt idler, wide end idler, wide belt. Ugh. Why idler? Is this the one? Nope. So yeah, nothing particularly interesting here. Actually, that's some pretty interesting geometry. <laughs> no, I don't understand. Why is this not the same face as this? It's just going to have that little jiggle in the print. Funny shape as well, isn't it? Funny shape, funny shape. Got the R1. Could be nicely symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way you put it. That would have been even better. But now it's going to matter. <laughs> or is it? They still might be central between the two holes. They just don't look it. Let's. Hmm. So the way they would have done this, for example, um, in OpenSCAD is probably first draw that shape. That's the, the profile and they extrude that and that gives you this size thing, but the whole thing solid. They probably then would have gone through this face and drawn, taken this box out and cut all the way through there. And that would have given them basically what you see here, this U shape. Then they would have put probably a plane all the way down the middle so you draw, you create a plane right down here and you draw on that. So you're drawing in this direction but on a plane that's right down the middle. And then they'll have drawn this circle that holds where they know they want their bearing, a bearing pulley. And they'll have drawn that circle and then uh, extruded that, a cut extrude in both directions outwards, which is why, and they've just, instead of, doing it whatever this is because they probably would have dimensioned this so this is dimensioned at 9.5 probably and then this is probably 10 yeah in my mind if they needed it to be 10 they should have put the whole thing down it doesn't really matter but that's probably how they would have done it and then you'll see if they want a hole all the way through not from the other side I mean it's basic 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 CAD just made eternally more difficult exponentially more difficult because of SCAD being horrifically difficult to use I suppose unless you're very well trained in it and you've used it a lot but compared to this I mean nicer I suppose probably more sturdy this one's not going to have the sort of wobbly this that this one could you could sort of rotate it up and down and the, having the two M8 nuts just crush it in the middle was not particularly great. I mean, I think this one will sit rather nicely. And but looking at judging by the depth of these holes, 
they'd considered nylock nuts because they're about four and a half mil deep and those holes are five mil deep so that's a good thing it's always nice to see nylock nuts where you can uh, why idler why holder front so this is probably for the yes so before where you had the corners, you now have this. Uh, why corners? So because we have now these plates and extrusion, as opposed to the M8 rods, you move your design from this sort of very holy construction to the rods with this sitting on top. So presumably printed in that orientation Again, they've gone with zip ties. Great. It's got nice chamfers on the holes at least. Square nuts. Yeah, facing down. Interesting. How are you gonna? How about? Oh, okay. So it sits on the. Sits on the thing, on the on the rail. That flat face faces the center of the printer, and these holes are for mounting it to the plate. And then presumably this is for some sort of alignment with the thing, but it seems a bit redundant because your holes are gonna do the alignment. Maybe? I don't know, we'll have to see how much that affects it during the actual build. Oh, did I mention I'm gonna be doing a build? I'm gonna be doing a build, hopefully live, hopefully very soon. Hopefully as soon as it gets delivered. Hopefully. I cannot promise. But that is my aim. I have a, a sort of streaming thing all set up in the other room ready to go. Which I also had to bring some of it in here today to do this. But other than that, should be ready to do a live build. Probably won't be able to do the whole way through because I'll have work and such. But we'll see how we go. Anyway, that's the Y holder. Interesting, nice that they've moved away finally from the M8 rods. But nothing massively interesting about that part. What about the rear ones? So presumably the rear ones don't line up with the, the extrusion, the Y axis extrusion. So there'll be a different, yeah. Well, it's ba okay. <laughs> So why, okay, so the front one's obviously lined up, so they had the little divot at the bottom, but these ones don't line up, so they don't have the divot, but they're basically exactly the same. You could probably just use these rear ones on the front and the rear, and nobody would care. That seems weird. Also, the, how's that zip tie gonna hold that in? It's just, it goes so wide. It's going to be coming out here and then up and then so far over and there's not going to be any I don't know, maybe it doesn't need to have any downward pressure it's just i don't know what it's for really why motor holder so let's bring the old one in why motor so obviously no end stop so that part immediately goes and then you're pretty much left with this flat plate with two holes in it uh, they've essentially got something pretty similar. I'm glad to see they've moved one of their holes out to here rather than trying to grab the motor just there. That was a bit terrible. Obviously, they had the uh, well, they added that spacer so you didn't uh, bend the motor. Interesting. Obviously, I mean, the only real difference here is that it's mounted to that plate with the nuts that you see instead of to the rods. It's quite, it seems quite a large part in comparison, but hopefully they've set up this hole or this whole arrangement for the stepper motor so that it can't bend back and it actually holds it up to the plate. So you, again, you don't have any of that weird twisting when you pull on the, when you tension the belt. Very basic part not worth taking too much of a look at. 
it's nice that they don't have end stops that seems to have reduced the complexity of some of these parts quite significantly the axis bottom so I don't imagine there's anything changed on this Although there is a different size to the STL, so okay, yeah. So they've put in their R1 notation to show you the revision. Other than that, okay, yeah, they've refined the hole there. They've put a slight chamfer on the top to make it a bit easier to put the rods in. That's nice to see. Okay, so they had a slight chamfer before. But this one's a little longer, but still the same purpose. Makes it a little bit easier to put the rods in. Looks like they've put some more chamfers around these faces. Before they were just flat to the bed, so that's that might make it a little bit easier to take them off the off the bed. So again, that sort of manufacturing time. They don't want to be taking ages trying to pry prints off of a bed. They just want to crack them off. Job done. So presumably that helps with that. And it obviously helps with us as well, removing our parts that we print. I don't know why these look so different. There's so many more lines here than there is here. Or is there? Maybe there's not. It's just an illusion. So yeah, not much change. A couple of chamfers and the lettering. I would have liked to actually seen some change to this area because I don't think this really works very well. I think it's a bit silly having that screw right where the uh, uh, the wires come out of the motor. It just seems a little bit daft. It is what it is, I suppose. I mean, the way you change it would be to have a longer motor, which you don't want to do because that's more money and you don't need to spend it. Or you move the hole on the part, which you also don't want to do because that makes all your backwards compatibility no longer valid. So you just end up with this scenario where they're both on top of each other <laughs> and you just have to make do. But they should at least do button heads. So you have the button cap, which is a, like a square topped, quite tall head, where, or you have a, a socket cap rather, where you have the vertical size flat top hex socket. We have a button head, which is basically a rounded top with a shallower hex socket and a slightly smaller hex socket as well. But that would give your wire a bit more room. And I think the last part, the Z screw cover. That's as far as I remember, just the same. This So the Z screw cover uh, sits at the interface between the lead screw in the stepper motor and basically stops any grime and dirt getting down into the into the stepper motor so yeah they are basically the same not sure how these work i'm not sure they i don't know i can't imagine that printed very well but they obviously manage it somehow maybe they get them stl printed or something can't imagine that would be way too expensive so I think that's all the parts. I'm pretty sure I've gone through them all one by one. Right. Well, I think that's where we call it a day then. Uh, as I said, I am going to be doing. Not in the. Whatever. I'm going to be doing a build. So. I know this one's not 100% finished yet, but it is very close. I did do a lot of it for those, well, for everyone else that was watching this being built, I did do a lot of it on my own. I have not been feeling very well and my internet has been absolutely terrible, like terrible, terrible. So I couldn't stream it and I needed to get on with it. So built a lot of that up myself. What I do still have to do is this which is my replicated uh, power control box for a Prusa Mark II, just because the original power supply that comes with the Prusa seems to be completely unavailable now. I certainly can't find anywhere to buy it, so 
I made my own. I basically took my file and modified it to fit this one, which just slips in there like that. It fits pretty well. So yeah, that'd be the last thing. I might do a bit of a stream for that. I'm not sure if I will. Depends what the interest level is and how keen I am to stream it. Uh, have I tried out linear advance? So that's the, uh, the thing that stops the build up in the corner, isn't it? And stops the bulging. Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> uh, I think it'll be something I take a closer look at when I have my Mark III. Probably. Uh, I don't know what else to say. May or may not take a look at it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. I might just do some, like a little print test, do some cubes and see what the difference is between the uh, diameter between the flats and the diameter across the corners. Distance, not diameter. Yeah. So yeah, I might have a, might have a look at that, have a little bit of a play and see how much of a difference it makes to me. Maybe set it to a really bad setting and a really good setting, sort of see the range of improvement that you can get. Other than that, yeah, push a Mark III build. Don't know, I haven't got a delivery date yet. When I get a delivery date, I'll try and set up a stream as soon as I can. So that that goes live as soon as it's available. Yeah, my Mark III I ordered on the 23rd of September, I think it was. Yeah, on the release day. So I should be getting one on the first batch. Hopefully it's towards the start of the first batch and not the end of the first batch. So that would be really nice to get as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully a lot of you will be keen to uh, watch that build process. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do the whole thing in one stream. It would be quite cool. It depends what day it gets here. If it gets here like Monday, Tuesday this week, then I'm not gonna be able to take the time off to do it. But I've already taken Thursday and Friday off this week. So if it comes towards the end of the week, then that would be brilliant because it means I can just take a whole day and do a build live, which I suppose is not that practical for most people on a Thursday, but there you go. If I do do it midweek, I might end up just doing it in the evenings, do a couple of hours each evening or something like that. So that's two hours, 15 minutes. Seems to be a pretty standard length for my streams. I don't know why, they all just seem to be that length. Completely not deliberate at all, but it just happens. So unless anyone else has any questions or comments or anything. I've got this, the first, is it the first ever Mark III piece being printed? No, probably not, but it, I did it. I printed a thing. It's only in PLA, so it's completely unusable on an actual printer. Because, I mean, it's never going to resist the heat. But, oh, the cur that curved bit's so nice. Anyway, yes, that is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and sticking around. Even more so to those that watched all the way from the beginning. I'm sure it's been as fun for you as it has for me, looking through those parts. I find it really quite interesting how, especially, I mean, with those errors that they just choose not to fix, bit of an odd one. Anyway, yes, thanks again. Cheers for watching and I shall see you in the next one. In the next one and the next stream or next video, wherever you choose to look. Righto, bye bye.